do you have do you have to have a beard if you're in the clergy? Uh, well, yeah, basically you do, uh, because a man does not shave like a woman. A man does not, uh, especially in the clergy, it's not seen as something that's. Uh, I mean, they would shave men who are defrocked or who are suspended or who are punished. That was a part of the sign that they were not a legitimate priest or, or a priest that was suspended or a priest that was defrocked. So that just tells you immediately that the beard was seen as part and parcel of the priesthood. And for men generally, I mean, if you read St. Nicodemus, all men should have beards. So it's why God, God gave us beards. Now, whatever that beard is, right, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't really matter. And the fact that people care is a worldly thing. In fact, the fact that there are people like they're like men who are like women today, and they're sitting there fawning over their beard, like they're a, it's just bizarre. Like they go and buy all this stuff to help their beard, you know, be softer and you know deeper. And what is that? Like, who cares? Why do you care? Um, it's worldly and feminine to sit there and pour over your face in any way, whether you got a beard or not. Uh, it's not, it's not, you don't find it in the lives of the saints. You don't find it in the lives of the ascetics. You don't find it in the glorified deified ones. They don't have mirrors in their bathrooms. They don't pour over their face and say, well, how do I look today? You know, this is vanity. This is a vain, a vain, uh, way of life. And, and, and we, we've taken for granted that this is normal. We've taken for granted. This is virtuous. That it doesn't matter. Like it's indifferent. Uh, so, you know, I, this might sound really harsh. I'm being really harsh right now. I'm just trying to drive home for everybody. I think the, you know, reorient ourselves a bit on what's important and what's the hierarchy. Um, what is necessary to be well kept, to be presentable so you're not a scandal, so you don't distract people. Uh, yes, that's fine. Comb your hair, put it, put it in a, you know, put it right. Uh, Take your showers, whatever you need to do to be presentable. But beyond that, beyond that, using gels and uh, and making it beautiful and making it this, making that, you start to get in the realm of just vanity. And it's not going to help you in the spiritual life. It's not going to help you draw cl close to Christ. Do you want to be with Christ? That's the question. The self-denial, why is it necessary we have so many aspects and so many levels of self-denial? Because we're sick. <laughs> because we're inclining toward the passions, because we're inclining toward vanity all the time. And so this is a part of the process of purification and, and, and health, that we get back to the essentials. What God gives us is so much greater and beautiful, so much more authentic and deep than anything we can create on externals, on the external level, by pouring over the externals of man, right? Proper clothing, modest clothing, modest, you know, hats or, or, or whatever, uh, these things are blessed. Uh, for the sake of order, for the sake of uh, certain, you know, basic uh, modesty and presenting it oneself. But beyond that, it doesn't matter, like, what your beard looks like. It doesn't matter really how, uh, how long it is or whatever. All these things are insignificant. And um, so, yeah, in the clergy, men have beards. Uh, that, that seems to be going back forever, right? And then in the canons, it's enshrined, and in the tradition of the church, it's enshrined. You don't find, I never found in the old country, any priest that didn't have a beard. In America, you find that, sure. But in the old country, you don't find it. I see on this